covenant with Moses, were killed in a horrific slaughter as Pharaoh and his army frantically hacked and sliced their way across the exposed land bridge of the Red Sea to the far bank. It was then the Egyptians tell us that the waters returned and killed Pharaoh and most all of his army. They, like the corpses of the many they had brutally hacked to death, were then washed away. So now we come to the obvious question. Given that the Egyptians freely gave their most precious treasures to the Hebrews, and begged their Pharaoh to return them so that they could enjoy the protection of the Hebrew God, why would Pharaoh commit such a heinous slaughter, and thereby incur the wrath of the Hebrew God? It only makes sense if you as Pharaoh knew that what was really happening had nothing to do with a greater God, but rather a greater technology. Ergo, incurring the wrath of a greater God was a non-starter issue for Pharaoh. So then what could possibly explain why Pharaoh committed this slaughter on the exposed land bridge of the Red Sea? Simply put, alien technology one that the Egyptians could have come by either by fortune or guile, in which they used to help them build the great pyramids, a device so powerful it could be used for military purposes as well. Had Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world at that time, had come to realize that Moses had taken a state secret with him in order to ensure the survival of the Hebrews. He would have been hard-pressed to get it back or risk it falling into the hands of his enemies. So why did Pharaoh and his army perish? Moses, who had been operating this device from the far bank of the Red Sea, knew he had to act, and deactivated the device, which up to that moment had been parting the waters of the Red Sea with a force shield of some sort. As implausible as that may sound, consider this. The Ark of the Covenant was built shortly afterwards, and it was designed as an electrical device of great power. The Ark was framed with acacia, a heavy hardwood that was used to build mummy cases in Egypt, because insects would not destroy it. This wood also happens to be a very effective insulator and this acacia frame was clad inside and out by gold, which happens to be incredibly effective as a radiation shield. In fact, NASA uses gold to keep our astronauts from dying from radiation, and we couldn't have gone to the moon without it. Further to this, the physical dimensions of the Ark are reminiscent of the devices used to build early radar systems during World War II. The Ark was an electrical design, and theoretically, its immense capabilities could have been used to amplify the power of a small device by several orders of magnitude. When you're fleeing for your life, you need every advantage you can get your hands on. And that would have been a perfect reason for Moses to take this technology to ensure the survival of the Hebrews during the arduous years following the Exodus. He knew he had to excise generations of slave mentality from his people. Armed with such a powerful weapon, he could keep his enemies at bay long enough for him to bring that about. Earlier in the program, I mentioned an interesting point in common between the Hebrew and Egyptian accounts of Exodus and I believe it could explain in part why God punished Moses for losing his faith. But is that really what the story is all about? During the American Civil War, brother turned on brother. One would fight for the Union and the other for the Confederacy. And over the course of the war, such sibling pairings did cross bayonets on the battlefield. As strongly as one loves a principle, there is a greater love, and when the two are in conflict, 
the result can be memories that torment the soul until death. Yes, the Egyptians were brutal slavers, and this led to the events that caused Moses to flee Egypt. Yet, it is hard to stop loving, for this is a very human thing. As Moses stood on the far bank of the Red Sea, he witnessed a man who was his brother, a man from a family that had loved him unconditionally, and now, like the Civil War soldiers of the gray and blue, he was locked in a mortal combat with his brother. Before him he watched with horror as his people, his blood, his lineage, being massacred, and so as a patriarch he had to put aside his own personal feelings and act. At the very moment he deactivated the force fields emanating from the alien device he'd stolen from the Egyptian royal family, he knew he'd sealed his brother's fate. Perhaps this memory haunted him throughout his forty years in the desert, until the day finally came when Canaan, the land of milk and honey, was finally in sight. The Hebrew account tells us that at the age of a hundred and twenty, God chose to punish Moses for losing his faith, yet we're not told exactly why. All that we're told is that he picked Joshua as his successor. Then after the Hebrews entered the promised land, he ascended Mount Nebo and died. And to this day, his gravesite has never been found. As with all history, there are painful memories we just as soon forget. Perhaps the given name of the Pharaoh of Exodus was expunged from the Hebrew and Egyptian account by mutual agreement. Moses, a priest prince of Egypt, honored his family by protecting their names from ignominy. Both the Egyptian and Hebrew accounts of Exodus give us horrific levels of detail about how Moses parted the Red Sea and absolutely none about the exact manner in which he parted his life. Was it really God's punishment, or did Moses want the privacy of an anonymous death? When you consider that the burden of leadership often brings the responsibility for decisions too great for any one soul to bear, perhaps Moses chose to die alone on Mount Nebo, not as God's punishment upon him, but rather as a self-dictated punishment upon himself. Perhaps as he sat atop Mount Nebo, knowing his people had entered a new land to begin a whole new chapter in the Book of Life, he could finally lay down the mantle of responsibility and put himself right with his own demons demons that had torn his soul between a family that had once loved him unconditionally and his people. Mm -hmm.